We're at the end of the French 7 p.m. turn, and there has been explosive activity around much of the battlefield. Um, let's see. So the French had um, reinforcements. So let's, let's take a look at some of the explosive activity here. We can see a great deal of disorder and even some permanent disorder caused by the shocking um, collapse of a certain division, which we'll go into in a moment. Um, the French had reinforcements in the form of the remainder of Kellerman's Cavalry Corps. Uh, so that's those three cavalry brigades here came up from um, the uh, Charlois Road, as usual. They advanced as far forward as they could. Now, there were some uh, sort of grand tactical options that were looked at there in terms of would they have been able to um, enter the uh, battlefield over here and move all the way in this direction and then beyond here and come around here to affect things over there. It was basically, it was just too far, especially with the problem of the standing crops, because of course you, you have to be able to get into position within 400 yards of the enemy and then charge them the next uh, turn. So that slows everything down. Um, and then also, I mean, even using even using march column to move across country here, uh, the the same thing was taken into consideration. If they had done a straight shot and gone up here, past uh, the village of uh, Piemont and shot straight past that or through it, and then around the woods to try to get into contact with uh, Perponcher's almost exhausted division, which is lurking beyond the wood over there. But again, it was just too far and it would have been easy for Pierre Poncher to have reacted and moved his um, bruised units back down this way and just out of the way. So um, they, the, the French cavalry would not have been able to catch them. So therefore, the French cavalry were moved into the centre in the hope that uh, they can be of some use, <laughs> essentially. We shall see. Uh, but the main event, of course, was that the um, the French uh, infantry brigades uh, charged all the way along the line here. Um, so there were actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, locations where they were in melee. And then also this brigade here charged this unit here um, in the flank. Uh, this unit stayed in place. And... Um, Yes, great deal of activity. So in terms of uh, the cavalry over here, just to be complete, the Kellerman's um, brigade over here uh, remained in place just to sort of keep an eye on the um, Allied cavalry over there. And um, the thing that um, was unusual was that, uh, or was crucial, I should say, was that um, after movement, of course, you uh, you check morale for everyone who's in melee or within close range of the enemy. And um, there were two Hanoverian units that were here. Of course, the French, when they charged, the French were here. The two Hanoverian units that were here, which, uh, just out of interest, was the 5th Hanoverian Brigade under Vinke and the 4th Hanoverian Brigade under Best. And, of course, these were... Um, the 5th Allied Division, which was commanded by Picton, the corps commander, directly. and um, But the key thing is that they were both um, poorly trained troops. Uh, the, both brigades were poorly trained. They had only a morale of four, and they failed their morale tests. So they both became disordered, which is a bad, uh, bad state to be in when you're about to start a melee. Um, okay, oh, about to fight a melee. Um, so that was what was going on there. And as we can see then, what, what's happened is, uh, let's see, this this unit here, which charged the flank there and also had supporting fire from this uh, heavy battalion here, um, did very poorly um, and came off worst. And so they were, uh, they were forced to retreat disordered back to here. Um, so they gave a good account of themselves there, plucky, uh, plucky chaps. 
Um, then we had, let me see here, we had um, just one moment. Yes, I actually made a mistake there. I said that this unit was also engaged and it wasn't. So there were, there were actually uh, six brigades involved up, up here engaged. And uh, so the uh, these two French brigades here um, managed, the, remember that they were being faced by the um, Hanoverians who were disordered. And then when the melee took place, um, they won the melee. Uh, that meant that the Hanoverians were broken and they routed right off the battlefield straight back that way. OK, um, so, of course, massive loss of troops there to um, Picton's um, division. Uh, then here, uh, the French were was a, more of a normal sort of a combat and the, the French lost. So they had to uh, uh, withdraw to this retreat to this point um, disordered. Um, the French won there. And they actually, they won there and the troops they were facing were only, uh, were, were disordered, um, were not disordered rather, but then because they lost, they had to retreat and dis retreat disordered to here. They were there at that point and we shall see what happened then. Um, these two uh, gave a good account of themselves and they, they beat the French back to here. So they've had to retreat back to here disordered. Um, but what that meant is that there were so many losses uh, on Picton's division that there was a possibility of um, the division uh, to collapse, and collapse it did. That meant that uh, this disordered unit here routed, so off it went, and this unit here, which was in good order, is now permanently disordered with the black marker, and of course Picton himself is also permanently disordered. Um and let's see now we also have so we've got the french therefore have got a little uh notch there in their quest for victory because they've got a um a uh an exhausted in fact a collapsed uh division but that's worth as it were one victory point for them um remember to their negative side to their debit they've got uh they're down half a point for having um Pigot's uh, cavalry division over here uh, is exhausted, so that's half a point against them. So on points at the moment, uh, the French are winning, um, but only by half a point. But they're also only a whisker away from having two exhausted divisions. Um, Prince Jérôme here, uh, his division, which is uh, one, two, three, four brigades here, if they take one more casualty, the division will be exhausted. So that's almost certain to happen. Uh, then also we have uh, Bachelou over here, where if he takes one more hit, uh, his division becomes exhausted as well. So there's a lot going on, which is good. That's what we want to see in a game. And we have seen some decisive action here. Um, I haven't, uh, of course, played Volley and Bayonet in years. So I'm not entirely sure if it was the best thing for the French to advance after combat as they have here, basically into the holes that had been made. Um, because, of course, now in the Allied turn, um, there's nothing stopping um, this brigade here, for example, from turning to face them and um, uh, melleeing them um, in the flank. Um, they can't charge anyone because they're permanently... Uh, no, because their the division is exhausted. Um, but there we are, we shall see. And uh, so that's the end of the French um, 7 p.m. turn. So we basically have two and a half turns left, so to speak. And very exciting stuff it is. We are at the end of the Allies' uh, 7 p.m. turn. And uh, there's been a great deal of activity and uh, a great deal of... Um, dramatic combat um, the allies in their turn uh, decided to uh, let's see they decided to concentrate on firing infantry firing at the artillery here the sharpshooters and the skirmishers move from this position here up to this position to try and cause some casualties on uh, this brigade here um, we've had, uh, they also, let's see, there was also a charge 
by uh, the guards unit here charging the French infantry that were here, which as we can see aren't there anymore. Uh, then there was also a charge by Brunswick um, Light Brigade here um, at the um, French uh, Brigade here. And in other moves, uh, basically some movement has been towards the Brussels Road here to make sure that there's something there just in case any French managed to get through that lot. And... Um, Essentially, what we saw was the uh, the French artillery here um, was wiped out. Um, it wasn't. It didn't belong to a division, so it uh, didn't contribute to any division exhaustion. Um, the firing here between these units was inconclusive. No result there. Uh, and actually, I'm sorry. I believe there was. There was sorry, there was a casualty. I believe on this unit here. Um, but uh, as we can see, the uh, the main uh, the main drama was around uh, the, the main line here. And so um, what happened was this unit charged uh, the uh, French brigade that was here. There was another French brigade here, of course. And it um, very heavily uh, won the uh, melee, causing these troops to become disordered and to retreat. And uh, that caused... Uh, they they ran into this unit here. Uh, they ran through that unit there, and rather than run into this unit here, an enemy unit, I routed them. I changed their route so that they would route down in this direction down here, and um, the losses were uh, then tested. Were also tested against um, the, the division had become exhausted at that point. Uh, it was also tested for division collapse, which it did. Uh, rolled a low number on the die and it was uh, so that meant then that um, uh, this unit which was um, disordered became routed so it's come down here so they both come down to this way here they're both um, uh, sorry one came down here and then one came down there uh, the one coming down here which was routed hit a Disordered unit from the other division, from this division here, which is uh, Jerome's division, and that then became routed. So that's the original unit, that's the Jerome's um, unit that became routed and is following on. This is a routed unit, so you have one, two, three routed units here. Um, the only good result in the combat up there was uh, this uh, Brunswick unit, which charged the uh, French here, was beaten off by the French, and uh, very narrowly, but uh, sent back. Uh, Wellington, Wellington has, had attached himself uh, also, but he managed to, to uh, come away unscathed. So uh, they were forced to retreat, um, disordered back to this point here. So although the French had two units here with their eyes on the road to Brussels, um, they don't anymore. And um, got all that going for us. Uh, we've got uh, this French unit here is uh, still in good shape, but now belongs to an exhausted division. So, of course, it means that it cannot uh, charge the enemy. It can shoot, it can move towards the enemy, but it can't charge the enemy. Um, so now the French have got a total of two exhausted divisions and one... Um, exhausted uh, cavalry division which counts as half a point it's two and a half victory points uh for the allies towards uh, victory in this scenario and the uh the allies of course have got one uh exhausted indeed collapsed um division pictons uh so the score as it were is two and a half points to one in favor of the allies and also note that um there's uh foy there with his uh uh, his um, collapse marker on him and there's Jerome with his exhausted marker on him um, so uh, at this point uh, backing up and looking at the broader picture do we think do we think that there's any possibility whatsoever of the French being able to establish themselves up there in two more turns um, keeping in mind, of course, that the only units they have that can move forward and challenge enemy units by force, by contact, are those from 
um, divisions which are not exhausted. So that means at the moment we've got uh, Bachelor who can only lose one more strength point and then he becomes exhausted. Beyond that, we've got um, the cavalry, of course, Kellerman's um, cavalry corps. We've got these three units down here, uh, which could move up there. But um, it, that, it's going to be awfully tricky. Always keeping in mind that uh, in the rules, um, the units can move through friendly units uh, without any kind of an issue. So it does mean that this cavalry, for example, could move up to here and um or park themselves there because of the high standing uh, the standing crops so they could move up to there and they could charge them on the next turn but that would be the last turn of the game so they still i think it's probably the case that even with the cavalry in those exceptional circumstances i don't think anyone is going to be able to get up there this unit here of course is close enough but it can't charge the enemy so it can't it can't displace this unit here for example um even if it destroyed them by uh, shooting at them, uh, that would mean in the next turn it would have to move up to here, so it can't displace them if they stay there. So it looks like there's no way that the French are going to be able to get the road. So therefore, could the French? Is there any way that the French could win by um, victory point instead? Uh, it's just about possible. I think that they could exhaust. Um, Brunswick Div Brunswick's division over here if they cause sufficient casualties on um, this unit here and this unit there uh, that would mean then the Allies would have two exhausted divisions but if things remain the same the French would still lose because they've got two and a half exhausted divisions and remember always that uh, Bachelot here is hanging on by a thread one more casualty and his division's exhausted as well and if his goes exhaust, becomes exhausted, then I think that just about uh, puts the uh, cap on the whole thing. So it's still close, but um, it's not looking so good for the French. Surprise, surprise. Um, and uh, well, we shall see. Here's to it.